Ooh. Even though it's And then our drain line runs along the right side and the back keeps us elevated off of that. Howdy guys, how's it going? So I'm gonna start off by saying I already regret coming out here to do this because it's as hot as balls outside and the humidity at, is at around like 85%. Uh, percent. So it's miserable. I do not, I flip it, I hate summertime with a passion. I really do. I much prefer winter, especially when it comes to doing outdoor activities. But uh, even with that being said, the plan for today is gonna be to attempt to dig a foxhole and camp in it and do it as you know bush crafty as possible although i do have a waterproofing layer that i'm going to use um i'm hoping that even though amongst these tall trees i don't run into too big of a root issue i don't know how deep i'm going to end up digging it uh one for daylight reasons two for heat stroke reasons and uh three because there is a possibility of rain with that stuff said, the only thing left to do is get underway and uh, try to get it done. Hopefully, you know, I'm just going to take my time and not uh, overexert myself. Uh, I'm going to have to go down the creek. Uh, there's, the creek should be uh, down there. Um, I'm going to go down there and re-wet this Shemag because it's pretty much just dried out from the hike in here and also to filter uh, some, uh, some extra water just to have on hand. So uh, just to mention up front, uh, my pants I have treated with permethrin and also the wool blanket that I bought, I sprayed down with permethrin. I'm definitely not going to need it. The, uh, the low for tonight is only, I think, 68 or 69. So to me, that's pretty hot. So we're going to be laying on top of that for sure. But with, you know, all those precautions in mind, we should be, shouldn't have to really worry about ticks or spiders or nothing too much. Um, but I still want to try to keep my bedroll off the ground. There is, you can't really see it not right now, but I should be able to, maybe not. The main proponent for today is going to be our folding shovel. And I brought my uh, collapsible buck saw because I am going to need to cut some support pieces. And then for the waterproofing layers, I got two plastic drop cloths because I do plan on leaving this thing constructed um and i really just want to kind of test out and see how it'll handle rain and stuff in the future so that is the plan for today so really the only thing left to do is get digging so there's never really any way to fully know how the root systems of these trees are going to work but you're sitting beside probably the biggest one in this gym. Actually, no, that's the biggest one in the general vicinity. Or it may, well, it, anyways, it don't matter. As far as what we're digging, uh, you're sitting beside the, uh, the biggest one, the girthiest one, that probably has the most uh, prominent root system in this small area. So I'm essentially just going to try to dig this about six foot long. I'm 5'10". Be We're going to take a trip to get some extra water and to wet this shemag. Because by God, I am, oh, I am sweating like crazy. And the air is so goddamn thick, it is hard to breathe. That's just 
the humidity. Right now, it's only about 84 degrees, which depending on where you live, that might sound like nothing. And to me personally, that is hot as all get out. But the humidity, once again, is about 85 to 90 percent. So that makes things literally a gajillion times more unpleasant. And also, we got to be very, very careful about bees. There is a deeper section right there. But... You see all these tiny little green plants they have such a dense root system and you combine that with the larger roots from the trees god dang nightmare Ow. god dang nightmare my shamog slapped me in the eye Okay, so we've essentially broken through the top layer of all this crap. And I'm pretty sure at this point, this isn't going to be a foxhole, but instead of shallow grave. But yeah, I've already run into some roots on this lower end that are like bigger around than my thumb. And that's what's really taken longer because whenever you're well, just digging in the woods or a very rooty area, uh... It's not about just chopping through the roots. It's about the fact that as you're digging around, even once you clip them off, as you try to scoop dirt out, it'll clip the end of your shovel. And then it just causes you to spill all the dirt back inside your hole, and it just makes things a lot more difficult. Like that. <clears throat> it's just like they're never ending. underestimated them a little bit we're gonna take and have some lunch oh, even though it's a decent bit past lunch and for lunch we're gonna be having a delicious can of white premium chicken breast
Oh, I'm pretty sure I got more sweat in my eyes than I do in my body. I've already drank over, uh, I think over a liter of water. And I still feel borderline dehydrated. I've got some propel mixes and the liquid IV in there, which I'll probably, I might as well go ahead and, I think I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the liquid IV. My sweat is like turning the dirt on my hands into straight up mud. I'm really not sure how deep I'm going to go with this. Like I said, originally, it's funny now, but I was planning on going about four feet deep. But with these roots, they're not, they're just not ending. And already on this upper end, there's one about the size of my wrist. So I'm going to try to get through. I'm going to go a, a wee bit deeper, but since I went, at, since I brought my big buck saw, that was originally just going to be to cut cross members. But I think I'm going to go try to find some large logs that I can put on the side to essentially give me an extra six feet foot uh it's not six jesus christ uh six inches of height and then this will just be a shallow foxhole and just for the record um the like the term foxhole feel free to look it up on google but a foxhole can essentially just be you can just pile dirt up around you and as long as you can lay fat lay jesus christ man, i think i'm having a heat stroke uh as long as you can lay flat and have you know a circumference of cover then Technically, that's a foxhole to my understanding, but then, you know, they go all the way down to Normally, it's recommended like if you're like if you're my height four foot's kind of like what they would recommend uh, Four to five feet, but then uh, it just depends on What you're using it for and we're just using this one to uh, we're just using this one to camp in so uh, Yeah, I'm gonna take and Just get some liquid in me. I gotta say this uh, I'm trying to figure out a way to do this without getting it dirty. Something new that I'm trying <clears throat> is I bought these uh, a bunch of those little plastic baggies and I'm using them as spice holders. These are like the extra thick ones. Um, so, so far so good. I got Old Bay black pepper and salt. So I'm going to crack into the Old Bay most likely because the last time I ate this chicken it's already pretty salty. Um, and I, I got to remember to keep my fork because this is going to be our lunch. I eat before I hiked out, so I had that. But then for uh, for dinner, I'm trying something new. I've got this premium uh, canned salmon fillet, and I'm not going to get it out. But also got a can of pinto beans. So that will all be very welcome by the time we get to that point. I'm already. I've also got a couple of uh, a couple of blueberry breakfast bars. There we go. Hopefully, maybe you can see that. It's very solid, like it's very good. I honestly just tried this canned chicken for the first time like a few weeks ago. Get moisture in there. Okay, that's working pretty solid. I like a lot of old bait. I'm gonna mix that up. Try to get all the air out of it so it don't take as much space or get any moisture in it. So yeah, I mean, I'm curious to see, you know, how that works. I mean, I have it in a Ziploc bag. It stays in a pouch. So, I mean, it's probably, it's not as, not as reliable, you know, as a hard container. But I would, uh, I think it works great for just, you know, single outs. I wouldn't want to take it on, you know, like a two, three, four week expedition and count on it. But, hmm. Normally, I'd warm it up where I'm so hot. Cool chicken. It's nice. Now, ant bit me.
So this is going to be this is going to be the hole for tonight. I'm going to go saw some wood. I'm starting to get a really bad heat headache. And like I said, I've had heat strokes before, so not pushing my luck. It's about, uh, I looked up on my phone. It says it's uh, 91, 92 degrees, and then humidity is at 92%. So it's, it's just, it's, it's stupid, uncomfortable. I hate summer so much, and these roots add to the frustration. Also, since I brought my foam sleeping pad, originally I was planning on cutting like just three or four poles to have as a bed to get up off the ground, but I dug this sump trench down at the bottom. If there is any light precipitation, it'll flow that way. If I end up getting a little wet, it will be very welcome. Plus, I'm using a wool blanket if I needed to get under or whatever. You know, wool can get wet, still retain it. But let's go see if we can find some uh, some logs or something to put along the side. I got to get this dirt pushed back a little bit. I put it a little too close. Because I figured by time, now that all these roots are mixed in with it, it's kind of holding it together. Okay, guys, so we got this dead tree here. There's one of its uh, large branches that have already failed. And then there's this one, which is off the ground. Now, that one right there is starting to rot, but it's not, like, infested with anything. But I was wanting to see if I could pull this one down. Nice. So it actually feels like it's about to break more so than the piece that's already felt that's kind of rotted. So even if that's the case, well, I can take it, it'd be even easier to carry in two pieces. So it's separated, which is fine with me because it's making it a lot easier to, to carry. One thing to note is anytime you got a punky tree like this that's like died out that much, you always got to check it because it, as it develops these like crevices and gets, you know, eat out for one, you know, first off, make sure that it's not completely infested with insects, which I'm really surprised I've not seen a single insect on this. But also snakes like to burrow inside of the holes and stuff. Bro, am I about to like dig up a dead body? Why is there so many flies? They just come out of nowhere. And now there's like a million of them. Oh. 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 Tired. I'm just experiencing heat exhaustion. With using the saw, this way it should be less effort. <coughs> oh. I lost a little pin that normally goes with the saw, so I've just been taking and cutting the thing of jute twine. There's a poplar right across from here that's broke. So we're going to use that. So I just found a 200 gram weight in uh, the tree stump that's broke off right behind that, if you can see it. And that's stainless, so. Huh. Only time I've ever seen use, these used is for the drugs, the drug eyes. Hmm. I'm going to put that back where I found it. So 
so much better than digging. I don't know if it was recording that whole time, but I found the dead tree, um, put the saw together, got those cross pieces, laid this way. Um, and then what I'm going to do, because a lot of the smaller stuff, it, it's too, uh, it'll be too weak once everything's put on top of it. So these are going to be the main support pieces. So I need probably three, four, or five more at most. Now we'll just start finding things that we can break and using them kind of the, as these lateral supports. And we're not making a full on debris roof for this. We're just doing this so it can support more weight. So when we put the drop cloth over it, the drop cloth isn't too stressed once we put the dirt on it. So now we're going to take and we're going to put this at the foot and then hopefully be able to kind of wrap some of the drop cloth up around that. Don't know why, but it is what it is. So I don't know if I've got two of them. I was hoping that one would be big enough if I kind of doubled it. It would work. But I might just say go ahead and screw it and try to use the whole thing. Because the dirt's actually going to be what helps with most of the waterproof, and this is just to help hold the dirt in place. So even if some of these sticks make pinholes in it, it's not going to be the end of the world. But if I can take and fold this over some once I get it long ways, then we will do that. One thing I'm doing that's not helping my future self is I'm stepping on these side piles of dirt and just compacting them, which is going to make... scooping it back up a lot harder. Dang, this actually might be long enough, big enough to cover both ends, which I wasn't planning on. Because I've got my reusable emergency space blanket I was going to use for the head of it, which we still would probably do. So now I just want to take and cut this underneath the foot box area. Dang, the roots are even getting in my way now. The ones I moved, they're coming back with a vengeance. Just gotta work a little slower. There's the first earthworm I've seen. Okay, so the top is pretty much covered as much as I'm going to. There's a couple little white spots poking out on the side, and then the front will be covered with the emergency space blanket. And then for this back area, since there's such a gap right there and I didn't put any pieces leaning up against it, I'm just going to enlist the help of our good old friend, Laurel. And we're going to attempt to just kind of break that up a little bit. I'm not going to go too much. I mean, we're not flipping... We're not actually hiding for somebody. If anything, it's more of a demonstration, but I think that'll actually help camouflage it pretty good. And you could always take and stick, like pluck this undergrowth and actually kind of plant it on top so it would just look like a mound or an upturned root or something of that nature. So you can already see what a big difference a couple of laurel limbs and uh, oak saplings can do. I'm going to add a few more and I'll bring y'all back in a second. Okay guys, we are just about 8 to 10 feet away from it and just a couple of saplings. You can probably still see a couple really tiny 
white spots. But like if you're just walking by on trail, you cannot see it. Uh, you know, you could go crazy with this and completely spend, you know, more time than we did digging camouflaging it. But for the purpose we have, which is just to sleep in it overnight, and then once again we will revisit it. Uh, this is more than enough. But also even along the sides, sorry for the camera angle, gotta move the tripod. Even on the sides, uh, except for that upper right hand corner, I mean I put some stuff up there too. But uh, I'm going to take and drape the emergency blanket over it now and kind of figure out how our door situation is going to work. And the sun is going down slowly but sure. The reason that last shot looked, the reason that last shot looked so bright is because the sun is coming from that direction. So it kind of messes with the brightness sometimes. But let's get that on and then we'll be good to go. Some electrical tape to bind it together. thought that was pretty easy and simple. The only thing I will say about the way I've got my mat set up is I have it cut in two pieces. Because one of the last times I used this foam mat, which is, you know, I don't use it that often. Um, this way the opening is where I can... That way I could pack it in my pack. And it would fit perfectly. So you could take this together, where this is already such a tight space, I don't think we're going to have a problem with it separating. And that works perfectly up against where I've got that log at. And then our drain line runs along the right side and the back keeps us elevated off of that. Okay, so normally I would always use cordage for something like this, but I'm going to attempt. If you want it to be more stealthy, I'm just tired and I don't feel like doing much more. I'm ready for, I'm ready for supper, so I'm going to weigh that down there. So now if it was going to rain, you'd want to reinforce this even more. But the reason that I'm running this corner down is because once my bag is in there and this is cut down, the water will funnel, like pull in where I have the, uh, the, uh, the water trench cut and it'll go to the sump at the bottom. So, and that right there, that's on there pretty good. It would take a good amount of wind or a lot of water pulling in the middle to pull that out from where it is. Boom. And that actually covers up that piece of white right there very well. So that, that works a lot better. Alrighty guys, so it is just now a few minutes after 9 p.m. Uh, my camera died and I had it, I've had it plugged into the battery pack, so I'm sorry that y'all wasn't able to join me for dinner, but I had that can of uh, salmon filet that I showed you guys earlier, and I gotta say, 10 out of 10 would recommend. I will put the brand name and all that stuff on the screen, and then I had a can of Lux Pintos, so nothing... Um, nothing too extravagant except I mean I guess salmon could be considered extravagant as far as canned meats go and then uh, I just heated up the beans with uh, the, my MSR pocket rocket and just had the salmon cold like I did the chicken and it was very refreshing but I can say that after like coming down and now that it's cooled off um, like that like that heat exhaustion at the end of the day it just hits you and like I'm dead tired it's already after nine and my plan is, after looking at the weather, like it, there's a chance that it could start raining tomorrow around lunchtime, but it's, like I said, we we're in the mountains, so it can end up showing up four hours early, four hours late, not at all, or full on lightning storm. So that's just, that's just how it goes. So I took my shotgun, I wrapped it up in my military poncho and I've got it stuffed on the left side. And then I'm gonna put my bottle and stuff in my bag and uh, like go ahead and push it up against this corner. That way I can crawl in and tuck the corner over. I'm happy to report that while there are still a few flies buzzing around, there's not uh, that many. So my plan is, once this, this shirt has also been sprayed with permethrin, uh, I do not need it for warmth at all, but I'll probably just kind of drape this over me. I don't really need to put it on because that would be a little bit too warm. And then if I end up having anything screwing around my face, I could you know just drape this over it or for a little bit cooler, I could just open up the shemag and handle it that way. So 
think it's going to go there and just kind of get tucked like that. This is home sweet home. I got that to where I can tuck it in. And like I said, my shotgun's underneath the wool blanket inside my poncho wrapped up to the left. Here is the trench. It doesn't look that deep, but it's actually like my phone depth and then the sump is at the very end. But very, very cozy. And uh, I think it'll be a decent night's sleep in all honesty. Well, all you beautiful people, I'm going to get in here. And obviously, I'll have to get back out and get the camera, but just so you can see how it is. And then, I'm, like I said, I'm very tired, so I'm just going to go ahead and try to get situated, make sure we're not going to have any major issues with bugs or ants or anything. And, uh, you know, I'll see you in the morning after that. Good morning, guys. That was a pretty sucky night's sleep. I ain't gonna lie to you. Uh, lot, I didn't have any issue with crawling insects, really. Like, I didn't have any ants or anything from what I could tell. I mean, I'm sure there was some, but it was really just the flies, man. Like, I took and used my shemag and draped it over my face, and then I put this over my body, but I've just been sweating. Like, I am... This type of shelter, especially with this reflective blanket, I should have... No, like, I did no better, but... It was just easier to use this for the covering. Like, since there was no precipitation, I would have been way better off to have left this open. And I did, like, open up this area right here for airflow. That's a piece of rope during the night. Um, but, yeah, it's just very... I don't sleep good whenever I'm hot and humid. And I'm very... Between all the work I did yesterday and then doing this, like, I mean, throughout the night, um, I'm very, very moist. I don't know if you can see the morning light glistening off of my arms here but let's get out and the, the day break starting to shine through the trees there but that's going to do it for this one guys i'm going to get my bag and the emergency blanket and everything packed up but i am going to leave the shelter constructed so that we can definitely you know check it out again once it gets cooler i want to come i want to hike back out and see what it's like after it rains but yeah, it's all just once again, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you want to share with your friends. Check the link in the description of my other channels, especially Pro Caliber Gaming if you're into gaming. Hit me up in the comment section. Until the next one, adios.